Back in 2018, Apple Digital announced it was discontinuing the manufacturing of its highly regarded Blu-ray players. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why Apple Blu-ray players still reign supreme. Let's discuss. Apple players were and are still regarded as the best Blu-ray players of all time. And with the UDP 203 and 205 players, they got even better. They can do HDR 10, reference quality video with HDR and Dolby Vision, lossless high resolution audio, Ultra HD, Blu-ray, 3D, DVD, DVD audio, SACD and CD, 4K upscaling, Dolby Atmos and DTSX. That was a lot. It also has support for decoding HEVC, H.264, VP9 4K, and high 10 p video codecs provide increased compatibility with user-generated media. It sports a customized quad-core video decoder processor, two USB 3.0 ports on the back, and another USB port on the front lets users play video, music, and photos from USB hard drives or thumb drives. The thing is just built like a tank with an extensive and impressive features list that few other Blu-ray players can match. So if Apple players are so great, why are they now extinct? In my opinion, the biggest thing that I think really hurt Oppo was not including native streaming apps on the device itself. Now, I get why they did this. Oppo makes, well, used to make premium, top-notch, high-end Blu-ray players that are built like a tank. And when they released their 4K players, I remember a press release explaining why they decided not to include streaming apps. And the reason was because they wanted to focus on making premium players with premium audio and video. And streaming apps would require more processing power and it would just drive up the cost with licensing fees for including apps. Excluding streaming apps would also allow them to develop players with focus on premium audio and video. Oppo's argument was that most households already had streaming devices and therefore you could just plug your streaming device of choice into the Oppo's HDMI in on the back of the player. Doing this would allow you to utilize Oppo's superior video processing for enhanced visuals while still getting HD and object-based audio. Real quick guys, if you guys would like to help out the channel financially, there is a generic Amazon affiliate link in the description. In fact, it's in the description of all my videos and it doesn't cost you anything, but if you purchase anything using that link, I will get a small commission. And if you need some awesome home theater seats, check out my Valencia affiliate link also in the description. Honestly, I didn't really care too much that they excluded dedicated streaming apps. However, I think this logic was flawed. While I will always choose a disc or a ripped disc over streaming, I can't deny that streaming is the way of the future. Just look at the influence that COVID had on streaming platforms. In 2020, streaming app revenue increased by a staggering 48%. And in the US, streaming apps surpassed 81 million installs. The top apps reached $605 million in revenue in Q1 2021, which accounts for that 48% increase from 2020. Now granted, there's no way Apple could have foreseen a worldwide pandemic that would last two years and counting. Nor could they have known the growth in streaming apps as a result of COVID. Still, when a consumer is spending over $500, upwards of $1,500 for a premium 4K Blu-ray player, people expect to at least have streaming apps to choose from. And I can't really argue with them. Most people don't want the hassle of taking one streaming device and plugging it into another device just to get better picture. It kind of defeats the purpose of a streaming player. That being said, I have used the HDMI in on the back of my Oppo UDP203 player with a few streaming devices, and I can attest, the video looks pretty stinking good. Image quality is definitely improved. But for the average consumer who just wants the quickest and easiest way to consume content, this just isn't a viable option especially if you don't have a universal remote. Then it just adds another layer to controlling your devices in a seamless format. 
In fact, it kind of makes it not seamless. Had Apple included streaming apps or at the very least included a cast option, something like AirPlay, I think consumers would have felt a little more justified spending premium prices because more options are always better. And history has shown that more times than not, consumers will opt for a cheaper device with more options than a more expensive device with a premium experience. Hey, what's up? You've made it this far in the video, so welcome to the channel and thank you for watching. If this is your first time visiting the channel and you're enjoying the content that I produce here, why don't you go ahead and do me a solid, hit the subscribe button, let your friends know about the channel and hit the bell notification so you know when I post new content. And if you're enjoying this video, why don't you go ahead and hit the like button. It'll help the channel grow and I would greatly appreciate it. All right, well, I guess that's it. I'll let you get back to the video. But all is not lost because you can still stream local content on the Oppo via DLNA if you have a Plex or MB server. DLNA, or Digital Living Network, is a trade organization that sets standards and guidelines for home networking devices, including PCs, smartphones, tablets, smart TVs, Blu-ray disc players, home theater receivers, and media streamers. Basically, DLNA is a glorified file server for digital content on your network. And when a DLNA certified device is added to a home network, it can automatically communicate and share media files with other connected DLNA products on the network. In the case of DLNA with a movie media server like Plex, you won't get fancy media art, a synopsis, title information, or Kodak info like you would with a dedicated app or commercial streaming service. However, the audio and video quality is a superior far cry from streaming services with compressed audio and video files. If you want the best premium audio and video experience for watching movies on the Oppo, and you don't want to fiddle with discs, DLNA is the way to go. If you have a Plex or MB server, and you can rest assured that you'll get the same exact experience streaming your local ripped content as you would watching a 4K Blu-ray disc. With Dolby Atmos and DTSX, HDR10 and Dolby Vision, assuming you've ripped your content one-to-one -one with no compression. And this just isn't the case with most, if not all other 4K Blu-ray players. Now granted, I haven't tried them all, especially the high-end players like Panasonic and Revon. But the first 4K Blu-ray player I ever bought was also the first 4K Blu-ray player ever released. Now, I don't remember the exact model number, but it was a Samsung, and the experience was night and day compared to the Oppo. The Samsung was slow, it took forever to load discs, and the DLNA function was absolutely horrible. It couldn't even stream a Make MKV 4K Blu-ray rip with object-based audio. In fact, unless it was an MKV with lossy audio, it just wouldn't play the file. The UDP 203 and 205 were released in 2016, and in 2022, six years later, they are still highly regarded and greatly beloved amongst home theater enthusiasts, and many home theater enthusiasts, like myself, still consider the Oppo to be the best Blu-ray players in existence for its superior build quality and top-notch audio and video quality. In fact, they are so highly regarded that they are going for a staggering $4,000 on Amazon. I mean, that is just offensively absurd, but that just goes to show you what people are willing to pay for these now relics. I mean, I wouldn't pay that much, not a chance, but apparently somebody is. Now, Oppo claims existing products will continue to be supported and warranties will still be valid. In warranty and out of warranty repair services will also still be available. Firmware will be maintained and updates will occasionally be released. But I think we all know that that's probably gonna end at some point. So should you get rid of your Oppo 4K Blu-ray player? I say no, absolutely not. Not even for $4,000. Oppo players were, and in my opinion, still are ahead of its time. Does that mean you should go out and shell $4,000? No, 100% no. But if you invested in a 203 or 205 4K Blu-ray player from Oppo, 
I think you can still reap the benefits of that investment for many years to come. All right, guys, this is going to bring us to query of the week. This week's query is, did you buy an Oppo 203 or 205 player? Do you still have it? And do you plan on keeping yours? Also, let me know your thoughts on why you think Oppo exited the Blu-ray player again. Have at it in the comments. As always, no matter where you're at in your home theater journey, make sure you enjoy it. For Haterate Cowboy Cinema, I'm Haterate Cowboy, and I'll see you guys in the next video.